Clarification statements, um, they're going to clarify. And what it means to clarify is that you're going to say the same thing but using different words. And what I want you to think about is why would that be important? The way that we're going to use it is it's going to follow your global reasons, whether it's your thesis statement and you're clarifying that statement in, in, in words that people will understand or in your body paragraphs after your topic because each of those will be a global reason that support your thesis, you're going to clarify. So that's what we're going to talk about. And there's a difference between a clarifying statement and providing an example which goes with your text evidence. Okay, so we're going to look at three different examples. We're going to look at the opinion statement, we're going to look at the clarification statement, and we're going to look at the example and how these three are different. So um, first let's look at the opinion statement. Boris is greedy. Now this can be a topic sentence of a paragraph if you're doing a characterization paper. So if you were going to clarify, which clarification means you're, you're kind of saying it again but in clearer words. In other words, he wants to have more than anyone else. So you're actually clarifying this word greedy. Now how that's different than your example because now you're going to support it. So for instance, when he and the other pirates found the treasure chest, he stuffed as much as he could in his pockets before the others could get any. So you have your opinion statement, which is your thesis or your topic sentence, Boris is greedy. You're saying that he wants to have more, so you're kind of giving that definition. But the example, that is your text evidence. That is your example that supports this opinion statement. And actually, all of this right here could be one full, um, the start of a paragraph, because you still need your reasoning. Boris is greedy. In other words, he wants to have more than anyone else. For instance, when he and the other pirates found the treasure chest, he stuffed as much as he could in his pockets before the others could get any. So you have, you have a great start to a paragraph. Next thing, you could do another example. You would need to do your reasoning, but that's a really good paragraph. Um, a second example would be Boris is massive. Um, by this, he means, by this, I mean that he is larger than most men. And that flows with it. It's just giving that, it's just making what you're saying clear. For example, when he tried to walk in the door, his head bumped the top and he had to squeeze his shoulders to get through. So you're giving an example and improving that Boris is massive. Your clarification statement, it really isn't hard. It's taking that global reason and, and saying it in different words so it's easier to understand. And it's, it's going to bridge the gap between your opinion statement, your thesis, your topic, um, going into your support, that example, whether it's text evidence or from your life. And, and that's really why we have it. It's to bridge that gap. It's to make your paragraph flow better. And, and sometimes we need to clarify what we're trying to say. Like if we were doing a characterization paper, you would have the start of two good paragraphs. You'd have Boris is greedy, Boris is massive. The only thing that you would need to do is to put in that text evidence, or if it's you're talking about someone, then you could use just an example or evidence from life to support it. But that clarification statement is very important when it bridges that gap, and that's why you want to have it there.